now that I've created my finished sketch, well, the next thing that we need to do is to create a finished legend that tells the contractor what each of these codes actually means. What product are they supposed to be using for the carpet, for the paint, things like that. So we're going to come up here to view. We're going to say new schedule. And again, I'm going to scroll down to rooms. And this time, instead of schedule building components, we're going to say schedule keys. What this is basically allowing us to do is create a blank schedule that's not tied to our model that we can then use to add rows that we can then define what all of these are. So we're going to have a key name. And then we're basically just going to create a whole bunch of custom columns. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create one that's called the material type. We're going to use this to kind of help organize our legend. So we're just going to make this as a text parameter. And I'm actually going to bump that up to be above the key name. And then we're going to create a column for the manufacturer. And create one for the style and the collection. One for the color and the finish. One for the install method. And then I'm going to add one for my comments. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also put an image parameter in here so that we can add an image of what we're looking for. And so instead of making this one a text parameter, though, we are going to make this one an actual image parameter. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm just going to move this up to come after the key name. And I'm going to click OK. And you'll see this kind of comes up just like a schedule. And I'm going to format this. So um, I'm not going to stripe the rows since I have an image. The striping of the rows can interfere with how the image shows up sometimes. So I'm just going to not stripe this particular one. But I'm going to match the title and the header to match all my other schedules. And then click OK. And then you'll notice here that there's not a um, there's not a row here like there has been in our other schedules we've set up. And that's because this is completely blank. So we're going to come up here where it says insert data row. And every time we click this, it's going to add a new row for us. So you can see right here, key name, it's already automatically assigned to one. So I'm going to change this one to say tag. And then I'm just going to create a row for basically every thing that we have. So I'm going to create one for carpet one. Um, and I'm going to create a couple for paint. So I'm going to call this one PT1 or P1. Just want to make sure that I'm matching what I actually put on my finished schedule. So P2. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to actually group these based off of the type. So I'm going to come in here. So this is going to be flooring. And this is going to be paint. And what I'm going to do is come to my sorting and grouping. And so you'll see that by default, it's going to sort by key name. I'm going to change this to say sort by material type first, and then by key name. And then what this will do is I'm also going to check this box right here that says header. And what this does is this will make a nice heading for us to group these all under. Now, I don't want to actually see this where it says material type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to formatting. I'm going to change this to be a hidden field. Then now you can see I have my group, the material tag, and then I can basically create as many of these as I want. So right now I just have flooring and paint, but I can create one for base. I can create one for basically any type of material that I might have. I could do a category for millwork and things like that. So what I'm going to do, though, is that I'm going to bring, and if I ever needed to add one, so if I wanted to add another row, and let's say, um, let's 
say we're going to add a milwork here. So I was going to add a laminate. What I would need to do is I just need to get that column back. So if I just come back to my formatting, uncheck this hidden field, and then I can just come in here and I can type millwork to add that back. Now, the important thing is, is that that will act, actually show on our sheet if we don't remember to go back and hide that field. So what I typically like to do is I select this column. I come over here to my shading and I turn this to be a, a bright orange. So that way, if I ever get this on my sheet and I forgot to um, hide that column, then that orange is just a warning to me that I didn't get the column hidden. So if I just come back here, and then again, just come to my formatting. I'll change that to a hidden field. And then now we should be good to go. And then basically I just need to fill this in. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to add the image of the floor that I selected. I'm going to type the manufacturer, add the style and style and the collection, um, the color, and the install method. And then I'm just going to change this back to say notes. And then you'll see here, so here's my schedule. And then I'm just going to make sure I change that title to say Finish Legend. And then I can just come in here and I would just add the rest of my information for all my other finishes. And that's all that I would need to do to create my Finish Legend.